Hi, watercolor students. By now we have met and you have ordered and received your supplies. And the next step is going to be setting up the palette. This is really important. This is when we use up most of the tubes of paint and then never come back to them again. Watercolor is 90% water and maybe 10% pigment. I'm going to talk a little bit about the color wheel and how to make it properly on your palette. And um, I mentioned in the next video, which I probably repeat myself a lot, is that we never put water in the wells. We only use the paint on the sides to just barely put it on the edge of a paintbrush. Um, sometimes water gets in there inadvertently and sometimes we need to clean a little when things get muddy. The palette that I have is not only a little bit muddy in parts, but it also has multiple colors that we will never use in this class. There is endless variety of colors that are abused to no end in painting. In all art forms, people abuse these bright phthalo green and phthalo blues and teals and magentas and really fakey looking greens and just gross gaudy colors that are fun in, in used in a professional way and in an expressive way deliberately and in a fun way and in a design way but not when you're learning the wheel. It's, it's, uh, it's really important that you use the primaries and not the primaries that they try to sell you called primary blue or primary red or cadmium deep or it's really difficult to find the appropriate primaries which is why we use a warm red cadmium red medium a warm yellow cadmium yellow medium and a very royal blue ultramarine which is very dark in nature but it's the best for blending so with those three primaries we're going to mix the entire color wheel. Then we're going to mix the primaries together to neutralize the center and put that in a corner and then put black in a corner for values and there is never 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 used it white in watercolor. You will see it Chinese white they'll put it in with a set it's awful. The thing that makes watercolor and ink paintings and drawing so beautiful is the paper is the brightest thing there and our goal throughout the whole semester will be to save that paper, the brightness of it, the texture of it, as much as we can. The goal is to always have at least a quarter to a third of every single painting you do left white. This doesn't mean just leave the background white or leave the tabletop white. This means allow the white to be positive space as well, to come forward, no matter whether it's abstract or realistic, it should be painted around to act as a highlight. It should be manipulated to really be featured. In a watercolor, there are gazillion mistakes. It's the most difficult medium there is. And our goal at the beginning is, throughout the class, is to avoid these mistakes. And you'll make them, but then we'll change over time. One is everyone uses too much paint too streaky, wrong size brush, too small, too gaudy, cover the whole paper, don't save the white, um, don't mix with water first in a pool of water. They're just a lot of stuff. And I guess the main thing is not honoring the medium for its delicacy and for the things it does and moves in ways that are spontaneous. Um, you have to learn to control it and you also have to learn how to let it be. I'll bring that up a lot. Um, materials are super important. We have very basic paper because we're going to be practicing over and over and over again. But professional watercolorists can get to a place where one sheet of paper is a hundred bucks. And boy is that a nice sheet of paper. So you don't want to mess that up. That's why we practice for years and years and years before we really get to a place where the confidence level is there. We're going to use a lot of pencil to draw and then paint on. Ultimately, you never want to use pencil. Once you get good at rendering so well, you just grab your brushes and go. And that's true of any representational work. 
But what, what we're going to do a lot in here is draw on sketch paper with gesture, loose gesture for accuracy, and then transfer with carbon paper so lightly that you can't even see it. And carbon paper is expensive. We only need a sheet that we share. You know, you can use one sheet a hundred times, but we have a drawer of carbon paper in the room that we all share. So I don't want you to have to buy a whole stack of it. If you happen to have it, that's great. But in, in lieu of that, we're gonna create our own do-it-yourself carbon paper with pencils rubbing it on the back and different things like that. I've really tried to break it down. Unfortunately, the palette is, the palette and the paper are the most expensive, but really brushes down the line are the main cost. The paint itself isn't so much. Anyway, I'll quit rambling for now. I wanna show you on this tiny homemade little mini palette on cardboard what the goal is. This is the only time in the entire class where there's no water anywhere near you. This is only the tubes of paint and no water, just a stick. Now a stick can be the back of a pencil, but not the point, just the back. It can also be the back of a brush, but we don't want to use a brush itself. So we're going to use a stick to mix all these colors. This takes a while, this process, um, usually a couple hours when we're in class, but I want to do a quick demo on to get a sense of how much yellow you're going to use. It's ridiculous. The amount of yellow you're going to need to use is ridiculous because it gets eaten up. It disappears. It is very weak in comparison to all the other colors. It is important that you never put yellow into a pile of color. That's the biggest mistake. It'll keep going and going, and you'll end up with this giant pile of orange or something, and your yellow's gone, and then you can't do your wheel. Even though I had you get two tubes of yellow, it's still not gonna stand up. So always, when you're mixing yellow, which is gonna be this whole top, because it's in everything. There's yellow in here and here. Everything from yellow to blue, all the greens, everything, is just yellow mixed with something. Everything over here down to red is yellow mixed with something. Other than those two sections, you're going to use a little yellow in your mud to make our brown. So that's all the places yellow will be. And again, yellow is the weakest, so we're going to use the most, and we're always mixing into it. And I can't stress enough how little tiny fleck of blue and red you will need to create the colors around it. It always happens, I swear to God, everybody makes it too dark. Everybody's orange ends up red-orange. Everybody's yellow-orange ends up orange. So I'm gonna try really hard to describe this without walking around the classroom and watching each of you. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a little, just with pencil here, I want you to see kind of the, the proportions to expect. This is not chemistry where even amounts visually, like piles. It's even amounts visually in the sense of testing it and seeing even amounts. It's not quantity amounts of piles. Um, again, no water, and it's a nice, clean, empty palette. You'll have it for years. And all the mixing happens in here and on the lid because you need a lot. So I believe I mentioned this somewhere else, or will have. We're always going to put all the water in here before we add paint to it. And we just go like that to get a little paint into here when we get painting, which you'll do next on the wheel. Okay, so you have, pretend these are your tubes. Pretend these are your tubes. You have two yellows, and of course they have to be the exact, but I'm assuming you all ordered what I asked for because otherwise it just doesn't work. Um, yellow, two of these, you have one black, you have one red, and you have one blue. Cadmium yellow medium, lamp black, cadmium red medium, and ultramarine blue. You don't have all those crazy in between colors, but down the line you'll add them. That's why there's so many wells. But we're not going to use all the wells, but we're building the wheel. Alright, so I'm going to just show you how much to expect proportionally 
before I show you a little bit of my palette. This is key. So you're going to be squirting out yellow. And before you even get those others, just pick up the yellow only. Take the lid off. If the lid is stuck, use a plier, but usually these new tubes are not. Um, this is going to be squirted out of the tube and put a big amount right here. So we're going to go big amount of yellow. Big, big pile. I would say in terms of amount physically, it's going to be like that. It's a lot. All right. Now, before you even mess with those other colors, keep your yellow tube in hand. And you know, when it runs out, you can really squish it hard on the end like a toothpaste and get more out. So you got this yellow. Okay, now you're going to go to yellow green and you want to use about half as much, but still a lot of yellow. Same thing here, same amount here as here. The well isn't that exactly symmetrical, but we work it like this. And also, we're going to label, not like this all big, but you're going to take a Sharpie and tiny, tiny, tiny right yellow on this little ridge, like over here, I'll put this in, like this, yellow. And it's permanent, so it works. Don't ever write anything in here. If for some reason you don't have a Sharpie that's this pointy, turn to the side and write it on the side. Just so you know, because those will be your set wells for that. So I'm going to write here yellow, I'm a tiny, some people do YG, yellow, orange. Anyway, I'm gonna write this all the way around. Green, real slow and careful so you can read it. Just on the edge. Okay. Meanwhile, giant pile of yellow, substantial pile, not as much. Each time we're gonna do a little less. And then over here, about a third of it. Let's just say full, three quarters, two thirds of it. You know, just a little bit less each time. And you're just putting a pile, not in the middle of the well, anywhere in there though, just kind of doesn't matter, just get it in there. And then you'll do one more small amount here and a small amount there and a fairly large amount in the mud. Boom, now you can take those tubes, set them aside. By the time you do this, you should have used at least an entire tube, at least. If you're still left with half of a tube plus the other tube, you need to go back and put more in there. You can't overdo the amount, but you can mess up the color. Another word for color is hue. Um, okay, now we're gonna do the blues. Okay, blue, you don't need as much blue as you need yellow, but you need a substantial blue. And then you need about less of that there this is just a visual so you can get a sense. And then less here, and check this out. When you get to yellow green, look how much literally with a tube. That's it. That's it of blue. Now we're gonna do blue violet. And over here, yellow is the strongest. I mean, yellow is the weakest, red is the middle, and blue is the strongest. So I'm gonna use less blue to do my mud but here's my violet. This is spelled wrong. And then I have my blue violet. And then a smaller amount for my red violet. Blue's strong, so I'm not using a lot like I did with the yellow. Now I switch to my red. Yellow, orange, check this out, just like here. Boom. I mean, literally, if you use more red into that, you're gonna have to get those tubes out again and go to town with that yellow and it's, less is more. If it's really light, then you can mix it and add more red, but never you wanna have to go back with the yellow. Orange is a pumpkin. People always make it red orange. Just a little. Red orange, because remember blue is the strongest, red is a medium. Yellow's the weakest, so we're not using as much red as we did blue. Be real careful with those flecks. 
and then red orange is a little more orange a little more reddish and then we have red you can't go wrong in the primaries of how much you put in there you just don't want to run out and then red violet more red this one will be like a brick and then this is blue violet and then violet a little bit more red than blue and then of course you put your your mud that so you do that before you even start one more thing oh no this is my black never mind this is my blue violet over here this is black that's why it was spelled private bl you're gonna have mud in one corner black in a corner put it black so you have yellow yellow green green blue green blue blue violet mud and black in the corners let's just let's just address these later so i don't confuse you you have 12 colors in the wheel then you have mud and black so here we go yellow yellow green green blue green blue blue violet violet red violet red red orange orange yellow orange and back to yellow yellow is always at the top of the wheel and then we just take extra corner palette wells to put our black and our brown now is when you get your stick and you no water just go like this mix 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 till there's no streaks until yellow green looks like this yellow green is always made wrong so I hope you guys surprise me <laughs> we'll see when we get together green you don't need to clean this because these are the same colors so mix 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 this should be an earthy grass green or doctor it up if need be still you don't have to wash it and we go here now you have to wipe it off because we're cleaning up again now we're to blue so clean this off mix to blue violet should be even steps skip those for now well that one you don't need to mix anyway mix to have a purple or violet same name and then same stick all the way here now we're approaching red so I got to clean again now I do my red orange my orange and my yellow orange boom then I mix my mud which is going to turn into a brown now my palette is all out of whack it's a palette I took from the classroom and it has way too many bright colors in it and it's not in order but I'm going to show you some of the colors because some of them are quite good um, the hardest of all is yellow orange wait this is orange yellow orange and yellow green are super manipulated the wrong way there's always not enough yellow so this is a pretty good assessment of that and I'm gonna just kind of quickly point out some colors this is plain old yellow just got a little dirty this is what yellow green should look like this is what yellow orange should look like that needs more yellow to be the proper pumpkin orange it's hard to see see a lot of times you have to to know what colors are right you have to add a little water later and spread them out and go okay is that more purpley or is that more blue violet that's a little more blue violet but if you add more blue it's a little better because then this is my violet so anyway sometimes in the dark ones you have to do a little experimentation later with a brush and water just to see um, I think I mentioned before that you always want to take you can even scoop your water in here before you start and a big brush always to get it in there if you don't just keep going like that so that's the step and then we go over and pick a color actually you know what this looks like yellow and that looks like yellow orange I gotta organize this and see how I spread it all out really wide especially with even wash we want to do this before we put it on the paper you never have to clean this if you're going to use it next time but if you're doing a project where you just feel like it's just too disorganized just wipe it off um, I think that's it for now I can show you my brown which is the mud mixed together there's the black this is ultramarine right here ultramarine is the one we buy you can see how that is great royal blue for mixing later for fun you do phthalo 
but phthalo has green in it. It's horrid for mixing. So again, like this palette has tons of things, like it has the phthalo green, which we'll use later at some point, intermediate, but that's not real green. That's fake green out of the tube. Real green is more earthy and more natural. It looks more like, now well, these are all too gaudy, but this is good for yellow green. And if I were to add a dot of ultramarine to that, it would be more earthy. So it's hit and miss. And after you guys set up your palette at home, and we have our next Zoom session, we can actually, you can hold up your palette and we can look in the camera and see if we can make some changes. Or you can take a photo of it outside. Um, anytime you take a photo of your work, especially watercolor, you have to go outside. And I recommend taping it to the wall of your house standing away and taking a picture in indirect sunlight which means in the shade but while it's sunny out ideally you'd put it on the floor on the ground and stand over it but people get these shadows on it so it might be best to put it on the wall make sure there's no shadows make sure it's daylight and it's outside and it's in the shade and then another thing you'll, you must do as part of your grade is to present your work professionally so you will crop it cleanly afterwards and I can help you with that. You never want things leaning and you never want to see edges off the side of paper but um, I think that's enough for now and I'm sure I'll be rambling more when we see each other in person but hopefully that'll get you started on this palette and then my next demo will be um, the wheel and the scales. Um, this is a difficult medium but it is fun too. And we're gonna do some cool experimental stuff. And you'll see the ways in which it does stuff that no other medium does. It's, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous medium. And I know we'll enjoy it together. Bye.